It's Miss Carrie back with another First Chapter Friday, and this is the first one of this year's summer reading program. We've got a lot going on this summer, and I trust that you're going to check and find out all the neat things that are going to be available to you, and that's not even counting, just the regular reading program. If you keep track of your minutes, this would be a good book to start with. This is a middle grade book. It's called The Boys in the Back Row by Mike Jung. The neat thing about this book, the thing I really like, it's about band kids. There aren't that many books that are about band kids that don't really make fun of them. I was a band kid. I was a big band kid. Flute, piccolo, played in the drum line in high school, and I love the fact that we are celebrating band kids in this. We've got two friends in this book. We've got Eric and we've got Matt. And they are just the very best of friends. They're sixth grade, members of their band, and they just found out unfortunately that uh, Eric is going to be moving away and this is going to be their last big hurrah at the end of the school year when their band is going to play at the uh, World of Amazement amusement park and they find out also that happening nearby where they're going to be playing is a great big comics convention with their very favorite artist going to be there. They decide since it's their last chance to have a bunch of fun together they're going to sneak away to go to the convention. So here we go. This is chapter one. At the start of every school year, mom and dad try to get me all pumped up by saying things like, it's a whole new year, or this is the year when everything changes, which always makes me think, uh, no, that was two years ago. But then sixth grade came lurching in like a one-legged zombie. And what do you know? Everything actually did change. Sixth grade would be the year I stopped being the boy flute player and became, okay, I didn't stop being the boy flute player in air quotes, at least inside the band, but I did switch to playing bass drum for marching band season. Yes, that's me, Matthew Park, the first boy flute player in the history of Hilltop Summit K-8 school. Not a good thing. And the newest bass drum player in the Hilltop Summit K-8 school marching band. Matt, to my friends. Friend, I should say, since I only have one for real. I'd been walking into the band practice room as either the boy flute player or the boy piccolo player, flute for orchestra, piccolo for marching band, for two years, so it felt very weird to walk into the music wing on the first day of school without an instrument under my arm. It only got weirder to go right past the piccolo players and onto the drum section. Unlike the piccolo section, the drum section was all guys, which felt a little like entering hostile territory. At least I'd get to sit with my best friend Eric, though. Wherever he was, where was he? And why was Sean McKenna looking at me like that? Sean was a snare drummer. Why was he playing the bass drum? Why was Hector Morales doing that with his hand? Oh, right, he had his hand up for a high five. Don't leave me hanging, Hector said, grinning so widely that I wouldn't have been surprised if the top half of his head just slid right off the bottom half. I grinned back and smacked his open palm with mine and looked over the drum line. Dude, this is so awesome, Hector said. Bass drummers rock. Totally, I said. Well, almost totally. Sean McKenna constantly bragged about his band, his drum kit at home, the concerts his dad took him to, and his girlfriend at another school. Sean did not rock. Hector was okay, though. We liked some of the same movies and stuff, and he didn't talk about himself all the time. The snare drummers were in the same row at the back of the room as the bass drummers, and were also bunched together like the bass drummers. So it was bass drums, snare drums, and then all the way in the far corner was the tom-tom drummer, Rich Isom. Rich was a gigantic hulk of an 8th grader, who I actually talked to sometimes, which was a nice change of pace from life with all the other gigantic 8th grade hulks. Sitting in the middle of the whole drum line, with Rich and the rest of the snare drummers to his right and an empty seat to his left, was Eric Costa, snare drummer, shortest guy in the marching band, third shortest 6th grade guy at Hilltop Summit K-8 school, and my best friend. Switching from piccolo to bass drum had been his idea, and the whole point of switching was to be in the same section as Eric. That included sitting next to each other on the drum line, but Mr. Radcliffe, history teacher unextraordinaire, made everyone stay late while he finished telling a story about working on an archaeology dig in Copperopolis, wherever that is, so I got to band too late to claim a seat next to Eric. Except it didn't matter, because Eric had saved a seat for me, like best friends are supposed to do. Thanks for saving me a seat, I said, as I sat down between Eric and Sean, who was staring over the ceiling. Sean tilted his head a little, gave me kind of a nod as if I was thanking him, then turned his eyes back to the ceiling. Mr. Radcliffe was, you know, being himself. No worries, Eric said as he put an arm around my shoulders and pretended to punch me in the arm. He nodded towards Sean and Hector. I had to tell these slackers to move over, but they know who's boss. Sean snorted. Yeah, right. 
Dude, you're boss, but you're not THE boss, Hector said cheerfully. You're the only person I know who uses boss like that, Eric said. That's because I'm boss too, Hector said. I jumped when he reached over Sean's hunched shoulders and tapped my shoulder, right next to Eric's hand. Base drummer selfie, Hector said, holding the phone up at arm's length and leaning into Sean. He grinned at Eric. Not you, bro. Sorry. Eric laughed and lifted his arm up and away from me. Dude, get off me, Sean said, jostling Hector with an elbow. He didn't lean out of the way of the picture, though. What, no selfie stick? I said as I smiled. Sean held up a hand with his index finger and pinky pointing up, and Hector took the pic. I wish. I'm just kidding. I'm not. I turned back to Eric. Dude, he said, this is the best. It's better than the best. No, nothing's better than the best. That's why they call it the best. What about the bestest? Eric did a super exaggerated, obviously fake eye roll, and I laughed just because it was the first day of school, and being in the drum section with Eric was already the best. Or the bestest. The door to the music office opened, and the band director, Mr. Drabeck, strolled through it with his, condu with his conducting baton in his hand. Hello, musicians, Mr. Drabeck said, as everyone but me was still secretly looking at their phones. You can't secretly look at a phone you don't have. Get ready to make some noise! There were a few cheers. Real cheers, not sarcastic ones. Band geeks tend to like that rah-rah, hooray-for-us stuff. Drabeck nodded. Listen up. Horns and bass drums have a lot of new players, so we have a lot of work ahead of us. But before we get started, I have some big news. Big news on the very first day of school? Interesting. Everybody instantly shut up. Mr. Drabeck clasped his hands behind his back, grinned, and rocked back on his heels, clearly having fun by dragging things out. So what is it? Hector said, drawing a bunch of laughs. Oh, sorry, I was just enjoying the quiet, Mr. Drabeck said cheerfully. I'm not so used to that. The big news is that in the fall, I send in an application for a certain music festival that takes place in May. And to make a long story short, we're going to perform in the World of Amazement Spring Festival for the first time. The room erupted into cheers. We're on a World of Amazement? Like on a field trip? Hector yelled. Yes, we are. And hey, no yelling, Mr. Drabeck said. World of Amazement was the best amusement park in the state. The biggest roller coaster, the best video games, the most swimming pools, and the coolest gift shops. It was huge, practically a small city of its own, and every year it did a super fancy spring music festival with tons of decorations, gigantic light displays, and performances by choirs, dance troops, cheerleaders, and all kinds of bands from all kinds of schools. Everybody started babbling about whatever time it was they'd gone there. Mom and Dad took Eric and me in the fifth grade. It was so awesome. Or, how about their, or about how their families were totally planning on going, but now they didn't have to. Okay, settle down, settle down, Mr. Drabeck said, waving his hands over his head. This will affect our schedule for the whole year, because the festival's in May, and we definitely want to be at our best when we get there. So we're going to have our normal fall marching band season, then have a shortened spring orchestra season, so we can get some extra marching rehearsal in before traveling. There was an awe or two, a few scattered boos, but most people were obviously fine with that. I mean, seriously, world of amazement. I'd skip all of spring orchestra for that, and I really like orchestra. It's really exciting, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But it's also going to be a lot of work, because we can't wait until the spring to lay our foundation. We need to start doing that now. We're going to rehearse like we've never rehearsed before. Buckle up! I held out a hand, palm up, and Eric smacked it with his, his hand, palm down. The blue beetle emergency signal ring on his finger caught the light, and Sean turned his head and looked at it for a second. I picked up my mallets, craned my neck over my drum to look at Mr. Drabeck, and had a super fast moment of panic. What the heck was I doing? I was a woodwind player, not a drummer! I got it under control pretty fast, though. I knew how to play real music, with pitch and dynamics and everything. The bass drum didn't even need to be tuned. Piece of cake, right? That's chapter one, The Boys in the Back Row. You should definitely check it out. Get registered for summer reading and count your minutes. <laughs>